Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike Kierke from Scratch. And today, if you're a Godot developer, I've got something that is going to absolutely blow your mind. I found this new add-on uh, just yesterday. Ran into some problems getting installed. Now that I've got it up and going, it is amazing. My intention was to learn it, teach you guys how to use it, and go from there. But I have a great tutorial that I can hand you off to. I've just used it enough that I know that this is incredible, and I want to share it with you guys. So it is called Concept Graph, and you can see it in action right now. This is all about procedural generation, and that just basically means building stuff out of other stuff programs. Automatically. So you've got things going on in this world. you got these three trees, this grass, and this big tree. Those are all procedurally generated. I'll show you exactly how Concept Graph is doing that. And we're going to look at one of the simple cases. we got the palm trees down here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Very straightforward. You can see here it is built out of a concept graph. This is the top level control here, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. But you see here we have inputs and we have outputs. In this case, this guy is outputting two meshes. A multi mesh instance and a mesh instance, and those together go together to create this uh, animated um, pine, uh, not pine tree, uh, pineapple tree that we're seeing right here. Palm tree, damn it, I don't know my trees. But you also see on the other side, we've got two inputs. We got a leaf input, uh, which is pretty straightforward. We'll open that guy up. You'll see it's an animated mesh of a leaf. Uh, so you could change that leaf up however you wanted, and that is the one input. The other input is the trunk. And we'll show how you these inputs are handled inside of the concept graph itself. But here you see, when I selected it, we got control points here. It's a straight up spline. And what I can do now is actually shape my tree using these inputs, the control points. And it runs through the entire uh, concept graph uh, procedural generation and spits you out a tree in the end. Uh, pretty cool and amazing concept. So in order to get this up and going, what we do is go back to the concept graph node right here. I'll show you how to install this guy in just a few minutes, by the way. But you see here, you've got your concept graph right there. Um, what you want to do with that selected, you'll notice down here, there is a new uh, window down here, concept graph editor. And you're going to see the first useful case of visual program I have seen in the Godot engine yet. And that's basically how it's work. It's built. It's built out of a graph of nodes. So we got various different things happening. The trunk, mash, me, uh, trunk mesh is being generated. And you're going to notice that was using that... Um, it's spline we looked at earlier on. So let's zoom this out. So there is the entire graph for making this guy. So here we go. We'll zoom back in. So we've got a scalar property comes in. The radius, the default value is one. And we go ahead and make a poly polygonal curve out of that right here. So now we're going to say tessellate that curve, but we've here got a curve input. So where does the path come from? Well, that is defined by this input. The input name is trunk. So in other words, we've got this here that was defining uh, the ultimate um, the input value that's being used here. So that's the path this curve is going along. We're creating a bevel curve here, and those together, we then take the material details we're working on here, set the material, and spit out a node. So here is our one output. As you see, it's right there. So let me spit on back in here again. That part gets a little annoying. Uh, so we've got the output here. And then on this case, we're creating the palm leaves. This is creating the multi mesh. And that is the other output right here. So that is the multi mesh for all of the leaves. And the uh, mesh instance is the trunk itself. So that's what Concept Graph basically does. It's this graph of nodes that constructs geometry. And we've got, again, we've got various different inputs we can send in. We can send a model in, like what we did in this case. This, these leaves are an animated model that we are providing. We could swap that out with anything else, and all of a sudden we'd have a very different looking tree. So if I wanted to make this into, uh, say, a pineapple tree, uh, I could add some pineapples in here, change the leaf out slightly, and then hook that into the input here. So you've got inputs you can handle. You've got various different outputs you can have come out. So you can, as you can see in this example, we can have multiple meshes generated as part of this process, and they are ultimately defined by the output nodes and it's all kind of held together by these concept graphs a really awesome awesome tool i'm going to be playing around with this a lot more and my intention is i, I was going to do a, or eventually do a tutorial on this and it's very early and experimental right now although it's also one of the most amazingly polished things i have seen yet and it's going to stagger your mind to see just the depth and detail to this node creation the amount of stuff that you can create down here. So see, we're doing things like we're creating polygons on the fly and tessellating them, extruding them along your curve, setting the materials, etc. cetera. Well, let's look at what nodes are available. So we've got a ton of different operators. We've got generators here. So create a point grid, a point array, instantiators here. So mesh instances, we could make multiple instances of a mesh that we pass in, for example. We've got boxes, we've got vectors, 
We've got utilities for comments. You see how we're wrapping these things around in comments. Curves, including curve conversions. We can create things into curves, take them out of curves. We have a curve as an input, like we saw earlier in this example. We've got operators we can do on those curves, such as smoothing, midpoint, displacement, expansion, and so on. We've got stuff here for debugging. We have some curve generators. I jumped over those. We have handlings for the inputs that come into it. You could set a scalar input or generic input that are passed in. We've got math available. Uh, we've got some mesh stuff here. So we can got use uh, constructive solid geometry mesh properties, extrude it along a curve, extrude polygon curve, and so on. We've got the various different outputs. As you saw earlier on, you can have multiple outputs here. Uh, inspector properties that can be exposed out, I believe. Is that how those ultimately work? Yeah, so these will expose these, these values out over here to the inspector. And then finally, we have a noise function. It's amazing the number of nodes that are in there for creating uh, really complex procedural geometry. And then once again, as you saw earlier on, we can pass in whatever we want to. So we can make things really, really, really complicated or really simple, kind of just stringing them all together using these concept graph points. And so head on back over here. You want to go ahead and instantiate one. You just can. So we've got multiple ones of the palm tree in our world. Uh, they're saved out as TSCN files. It's it's mind-blowing what you can do here. Now, again, I don't have a huge amount of uh, depth with this. I, I will show you how to do the install process. I'm going to keep playing with it myself. I just thought this was so cool that I should share it with you guys as well. And if your blind, mind's not a little blown right now, I, I am shocked. I, I, it's, it's kind of... Uh, this kind of is a bit of a game changer for how you can use the Godot engine in some ways. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. This is experimental. It's a one-man effort, which is really impressive. Hungry Proton, man, you nailed this one. Uh, it's node-based procedural content generation, as I mentioned earlier on. It's MIT licensed. You can get the source code here, by the way, oh, and I will link the links all down below, but it's available at this uh, GitHub repository. But what you want to do to get it installed, we're going to grab that guy right there. So the, the URL, we'll, we'll come back to it, the Git URL. Um, but you can learn a little bit more about here. Uh, the most important part, you scroll on down here, you're going to find there's the wiki and the video tutorial. The wiki is um, pretty solid, actually. You've, you've got actual documentation for how to use this and how the plugin is even organized, how everything works, the entire concept behind it. It is really well documented for a, an experimental or work in progress pro project. Uh, and then on top of that, as I mentioned earlier on, I was going to get more familiar with how to work with this guy. And then I realized there's this video out there. So I'm, I'm just going to link this. I'll link this in the linked article down below and I will link this directly down below. So if you want to get your hands on concept graph right now, uh, he just published a video yesterday on how to do it. Unfortunately, the audio is really quiet. You're going to have to crank it up. Um, but it, it's really worth checking out. And it's a big reason why I'm just going to go ahead and get this video out to you guys because you don't have to wait for me to teach it. He does a great job in this video right here. I'll just show you the very basics of getting up and started. And it really couldn't be easier. What you want to do, assuming you don't have any problems, by the way, I did run into a problem and I think it's due to my install, but essentially I was getting permission issues. I had to go into my app data and new Godot. So if you run into some problems, check out your app data. There might be something causing issues there. I can't tell you for sure, but basically... I'm going to quit out of Godot. Uh, don't save anything. Don't save anything. Don't save anything. All right. So let's fire Godot back up. Here we go. So I'm using, uh, actually, I want to use the other one. 3.21 stable. This is the most current release as of the time I'm doing this video. And we're going to go ahead and create a new project. And we'll call this uh, YouTube demo. And of course, it goes in temp because everything goes in temp. All right. So we're going to create that. And we're done. So there we've done. We've created our project. It is good to go. Now what you want to do is fire up command prompt and change into that directory. So here, we'll, we'll make that a little bit. So let me just make this. Okay. So CD, uh, what did I call that thing? YouTube, yeah, YouTube demo. So here we are in the YouTube demo. Now what we want to do is pull down the add-ons. We're going to make a folder. So make dir um, add-ons like so. CD into that directory and do a git clone and then paste that repository we did earlier on. And so that will now pull down all of the assets that we were just looking at, all the, the things you need to make the plugin. You're going to let it, because it pulled in a bunch of sample content as well, let it uh, pull all that stuff in and now go into project, project settings, go into plugins. I don't know why we call it plugins here, but add on somewhere else. I think we should probably standardize on the naming there and set it to active. All right. And now close out of there. And now it should be good to go. So if you want to go ahead and create your own, let's create a 3D scene and go ahead and get new. And what you're looking for is a concept graph. Uh, so right there, and then boom, 
There is your graph. You start doing inputs. You start doing outputs. So uh, with the, you just go to the root of the concept graph, and then you've got control over it right here. You can either create a new one or load from a template. There's a couple of templates included. Also, if you want to get started a little earlier or stump, jump into an existing instance, they are available in here. So if we go ahead and just do... Um, Okay, how am I going to do this? So I'll just go ahead and add it in as an, a child of the scene. So here we'll go. Okay, why are you not? All right, I'll just find it here. So we go here, go here, and then so we've got four different scenes you can start from in various different degrees of complexity. The palm tree one is probably the most complicated. We've got another one. You haven't seen this yet. So I'll open up camp.tscn. This is basically procedurally creating a campsite. So you got this fence that's being created, a couple of other inputs being handled here. Uh, so on the output, we got a ton of different fences, uh, a lot going on here. We've got these, these TPs or these huts or whatever you want to call them. Um, but let's go ahead, check out this fence, for example. So we can go here to this, the whole thing. It's all being fed by inputs and outputs. Here's our fence. Go to the input. It's being driven by a path. And what we can do is could take the control points on that path. And as a result, we can move our fence around like so. So you see how that procedural generation is basically going through, taking your inputs, working with it, and making these fence planks out of the end result. Uh, really uh, powerful, powerful tool that you've got here. And again, if you want to jump through and look at a couple of examples they are all in here. The palm tree one is actually, sorry, the palm tree is a little simpler. Ironically, simple tree is more complex. You see here, we've got, it's creating a tree, but it's also creating uh, grass and such in the world. And this is a good way you can come in here and see how things are generated. You ultimately always just want to locate the root node in the uh, concept graph. So you see here, it will be of type concept graph. Uh, I've got my things shown a little weird but then when that's in you basically will see it load up down here go to concept craft editor and then you can jump in and start creating it. it it's it's really cool and if you make a change here like so you can replay the simulation and see the end result of that change uh yeah so that that's concept graph again i'm gonna i've just got my hands on this one myself i'm gonna keep playing around with it a little bit more but it's it's amazing uh, i Really, all I can say. So, really, all the best to uh, uh, Hungry Python or Hungry Proton. Sorry, Hungry Python. That sounds. Anyways, uh, I will uh, make sure that all this is linked down below. So I, I'm not going to bother again learning it much more, getting into much more detail because he's already nailed it. Check out his video. I'll, I'll also link his Twitter in the linked article down below. And of course, I will link to the GitHub. Uh, this is the kind of stuff when uh, a community project comes up with it, I, I'm always a little blown away and I love sharing this kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys found it interesting and useful procedural generation, especially from products like Houdini and so on. It's just kind of becoming more and more and more the way work's done, especially as the complexity of games gets more and more complex uh you know procedural generation does seem to be a bit of the future and concept graph brings a bit of that into the world of uh godot and it does so in a polished and impressive way especially for a product that is being considered experimental so uh, i hope your experiment continues hungry proton great work and uh let me know you guys what you think and again do be sure to check out his video check out his twitter and all that stuff everything will be linked down below all right talk to you all later